Technology has had a fundamental impact on the lives we lead, from facial and voice recognition software to sophisticated medical diagnosis and treatment. These technologies have quietly changed nearly every aspect of our existence, and they haven't finished yet. So what are intelligent services like in China? Let's go and find out. So our first stop is here in Dashing District, Southern Beijing, at Baidu's Autonomous Test Driving Area. Now we're here to check out their Apollo Go Robo Taxi, which as you can tell by the name, is autonomous. So the project was launched on the 10th of October 2020 and to service this southern area of Beijing. Now, where I'm actually standing right now is one of the pick-up and drop-off zones where you can actually hail one of these taxis. The weather in Beijing today is freezing, so I think it's time we went and got ourselves a taxi. The greater integration between electrification, networking and intelligent technology is propelling autonomous driving into the fast lane as an exciting trend for future travel and creating greater opportunities for the automotive industry. So the good news if you want to hail an Apollo Go is that you just need to use Baidu Maps, which is like Google Maps, and you can register for a taxi on there. The bad news, for me anyway, is that you currently need a Chinese ID to register, and I don't have one. However, I do know someone who does. Zoe! Hiya! I so, got everything ready. You got everything ready? Yeah. How long yeah. do you have to wait? Uh, it's uh, about four minutes. Four minutes. How was the Apollo go? How did it run? It was uh, pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, I just saw the car that drove a south. Yeah, it was a new experience. Yeah. Okay, cool. There was the tablet inside. What was that for? Actually, there are different kinds of maps. So, like the normal maps, you see the orders that tell you where to go yeah. and how far you've uh, you've gone. You know. Also, there was a live map as well. Right. Yeah, live map which tells you how many cars you know driving on the road uh -huh. and how many people they are working at. It. Really. And actually, real people they they share with people like on the map. Did you feel safe in it? I was pretty safe with the help of the maps. You yeah. know, I can see what's going on. I feel like pretty safe. Yes. Okay. Autonomous technology has become a key development path for Beijing and its high-tech industries. To continue this progress, Beijing will open the world's first cloud-controlled, high-level autonomous driving demonstration area in the Beijing Economic and Technological Development Zone. Autonomous driving must be tied together with our urban plan. Think of the following scenarios. If today, the majority vehicles on the roads they are autonomous vehicles. How is that going to happen? You and I can cross the road without the second thinking because we know the autonomous vehicle will stop right in front of us. Of course, I, I think uh, this extreme scenario may not happen, but this gives us a thinking point. So the autonomous vehicle is going to become a connecting point to connect the urban planning, transportation planning, and our daily life in the different ways in the years to come. It is not only the roads where Chinese society is experiencing an intelligence upgrade. High-speed rail, the jewel in the country's transport crown, has also entered a stage of smarter and greener development. This Fuxing train behind me is part of China's first intelligent high-speed railway network, connecting Beijing and Zhengzhakou, one of the host cities for the 2022 Winter Olympics. Now this train is special. Not only can it go a whopping 350 kilometers an hour, it can also do it in harsh Arctic conditions. Now the smart services on this train are in changing the train's entire ecosystem. It's improving customers' experience, improving workers' and conditions, and also improving the environmental protection. The application of this new intelligent technology starts from the moment you check in for your train with facial recognition software used to identify passengers, rather than the traditional scanning of tickets or ID cards. 
Once on board, passengers can enjoy modern services such as super-fast 5G Wi-Fi and a luxurious business travel experience. If I compare China to other countries like, like Europe, hmm? like US, um, what we found out, or let's say what we have observed in the recent year, is that the implementation of new technology is very, very fast here in China. This is mainly due by um, having central governments um, defining the path to go and the, the fast implementation of the strategy hmm? to achieve the vision. And that is the major success factors of the new technology here in China. So I'm pretty confident that all this new technology related to infrastructure will have in the future more and more dominance coming from China. The dining car is so different from other uh, high-speed railways. Okay, how is it different? Uh, as you can see, there is a dining bar on yes. it up here. Other high-speed railways doesn't. They don't have it, yeah. They don't have it. I like this. The big difference from the uh, dining car is our carri uh, carriage. Uh, during the 2022 Winter Olympics, we can watch 5G uh, live events through this big really? screen. Yeah. So for the 2022 Olympics, we'll be able to watch it whilst we're going? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's good. No one would have ever predicted that 70 years on, China would be the world leaders in almost every aspect. You have sent people to space, you are going to the deepest part of the ocean and the submarines. You have one of the most extraordinary network, I mean infrastructure network of roads, of airports, of railway station, not talking about 5G. Rapid technological advances are fundamentally changing the way Chinese people live and travel. In 2021, China will initiate its new five-year plan, one where scientific and technological innovation will play a key role. It begs the question, what will China be like in five years' time? I guess we'll have to wait and see.